So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about brain breaks. The one thing you need to know is you need to have a piece of paper and something to write with for one of the brain breaks that we're going to do and that we're going to participate in today. So if you want to kind of be looking around for that as we get started. So just very quickly, I'm Sharon and I am the CEO or my more favorite title is the Chief Idea Sparker of Play With a Purpose. Um, we've been in business for um, almost 30 years doing fun and play. So we truly believe in the power of play, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Josh, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Josh Bell. I am the uh, Senior Manager of Experiential Learning with Play With a Purpose. So my job is to, uh, to take the fun content in, in conferences and then add some engagement to it so we all get those aha moments and, and walk away feeling like we've uh, truly been fulfilled with the uh, information we've gotten. Perfect, thank you. So what we're gonna do is kick off with a quick brain break. We know you've been sitting there and running from session to session and trying to figure out how to use Zoom and all of that. So we're gonna do a very quick brain break here before we get started. So what I would like everybody to do is you have 30 seconds to go run and grab the, th the thing that gives you the most pleasure while you're quarantined, your favorite thing to spend time with while you're quarantined. Remember, we are on a public scale and we are being recorded. So your favorite thing to be, re to be recorded with, your favorite thing to be quarantined with. I see you, Heather. Gotta have that coffee, Elizabeth. Daryl, is that a puzzle? Yeah, it is. There it is. Spatula. <laughs> All right. Puzzle. Your fern, TV your remote. Netflix, I see your it. TV remote. Very good. Very good. Oh, your family. I like that. Are those raisins chocolate covered? I see it, Richard. Yeah, I can't live without my chocolate raisins. There are All so right. many bottles of wine. <laughs> oh, very and I see fun. The Very fun. A little insight to everybody's personalities. Great. All right. Now what I'd like you to do is on a um, scale of, um, well, let's not do it on a scale. Let's just show. How quickly do you think that you will be running a live meeting again. So is it one month, two months, 10 or more months? So sh just show us real quick how many months it'll be before you think you're running a live meeting again. Ten, ten, ten. Some some really close in numbers. Team. I've got some somebody saying two numbers. weeks in the chat. Two weeks, wow. That's what they said. That's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. That is terrific. All right, last brain break, last really quick exercises. I want you to go grab something. Again, 30 seconds. Speedy Gonzalez, thir uh, go grab something that represents why you love working in the meetings industry. Why you love working in the meetings industry. Is that, is that a bag? Blue? Your team? Team notes, okay, cool. I see it, I see it. A blue pig, what's that? We're gonna have to catch up later. In the chat, what's a blue pig mean? <laughs> Best in travel, I like that, I like that. Pretty sure I just saw All the right. bedazzled face mask. <laughs> that must have been from one really great party. All <laughs> right, sounds good. Oh, somebody showed us something, Neil's showing something on his phone. Friendship, party. I like that. Cool. Cool, very good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And that is an example of a really quick brain break. So the whole purpose of that is really just to distract you. And, and for us, brain breaks really kind of achieve three different, or excuse me, four different things. One, 
is they help participants stay focused and engaged. So anytime that you can quit looking at a slide for a little while, do something physical, get some blood going to your brain, get some oxygen going, that helps you stay awake and stay focused and stay there. It could also be something to, to either energize or relax you. We're seeing lots of brain breaks happening right now with remote teams. So at the end of a long, hard Wednesday or at the end of the week, people getting together for happy hours and doing trivia contests or you know, wearing a crazy hat or celebrating someone's birthday together with really creative birthday ideas. So there are lots and lots of different um, ways to do brain breaks, but our favorite way is to really help with processing content and learning. Because if you're doing something interactive and participatory and fun, in your learning, then your brain doesn't get as tired and you absorb more and you learn more. So for us, the purpose of a brain break is probably the most important thing. It's understanding why are we doing a brain break and, and picking a brain break that will actually help you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. So it's connecting the purpose of your meeting, the messaging, the content, uh, the branding all together in some kind of a fun and interesting, interactive, creative outlet for your team. So, so what we want to do is just talk very quickly about the different reasons why you might use play and how you might use that and accomplish different goals with that. So the first one is really about just a really simple engagement tool. So for us, this is things like polling, just some temperature taking, some surveys, the things that are included in most conference apps or in most conference or virtual conference tools. The ability to chat and just talk to each other and, and engage a little bit there. The ability to ask questions, the ability to um, do some, some poll taking in the middle, like the thing I did with the thumbs up, show me how you're feeling or what's going on, or tell me how many months you're coming. So, so that is kind of really the basic form. It's something you can throw in anytime and it does wake people up and get them energized. Then the second level comes into about into building engagement and building inclusivity. So this is really games that are more about getting to know you. It's games that are play for play's sake. Um, the uh, trivia contests are a great example of this. Um, the uh, everybody read a book and we're going to do a book club meeting and talk about the book is a good example of this. So this is things where you're basically trying to create some games and some fun and it really is a mental break. It's play for play's sake. Then you get into the next level. And the next level is really about starting to build some skills and building some personal skills. This could be teamwork skills, it could be relationship skills. Um, in these kinds of activities, collaboration is critical to the success of the event. So it's not in a trivia game, I answer a question and I get points. Those points might be attributed to my team, but I didn't need my team to get any points. So the next level up is really all about how do we build activities and events that cause people to collaborate and work together. So there's a lot of those out there. A good example might be one uh, like Chain Reaction or the Rube Goldberg kind of an event where everybody has specific things they have to do, specific parts they want to do, and they want to get into that. Then the highest level of engagement is really growth and skill building. So this is when you have real true learning outcomes for whatever the game you want to play is. Um, this is the highest level and it's the hardest one to find in the virtual world because um, right now, because virtual is so new to a lot of companies, we're really doing the fun games and we've got some basic team games. Um, and as you move up that scale, you add facilitation, you add debrief, you add um, tie-ins to your content and to your messaging. You build the activity around what your content is. And so people are engaging with that, learning from it, sharing with each other, and actually getting to apply some of their knowledge so that they can, um, so that they can build on that content. So 
So I, I'll come back to the, for us, the most important thing to do is, all, in our opinion, all play is awesome because obviously we're play with the purpose. <laughs> so all play is awesome. Um, but it's really key to understand why are we going to play and then choosing something that really fits. And the higher up you go in choosing like growth and skill building kinds of play, the less you need some of the other forms of play because you're breaking up your content and you're energizing through your content as opposed to something that's distracting. So it's really about choosing what is that right kind of play for you and sharing that with your audience. Has anybody ever done an activity where you went, why did we do that? And we're all rolling our eyes and going, Ugh, this is crazy. A lot of people, I've done a lot of it. I've sat in the session and everybody says, okay, everybody get up and you know, do twists and twirls and jumping jacks. And then we sit back down and they jump in. And I'm like, why did we just do that? If they had said, you know, we do that because when you do that, it stirs your brain and your brain gets going better and things happen with your, um, with your internal nervous system and the blood flow and it's good to get oxygen to your head and it'll help learn better. Then I would have connected and gone, okay, well, that twisty twirly thing wasn't quite so silly as I thought it was. So, so you really do want to connect it for your audience so that they understand why you're doing something. Okay, so right now I'm going to turn it over to Josh and we are going to do an example of a brain break on the level four. So we're going to show you. So the one we did first was eh, probably somewhere between level one and two, just for fun, very basic, you know, play for play sake. And now we're going to do one on the upper level to kind of show you the opposite of the extremes. And this is will be a very basic one because we literally have a very, very, very short time. So, all right, Josh, take it over. All right, thank you. I'm going to do this speedy, speedy, since we only have five minutes and I want to get to some of those amazing questions. So inside uh, the random, uh, I randomly selected one participant. Uh, Adam, you're there. He is going to lead us in a, a session of Art Director. Now, this can be used uh, once you're starting a, a conference, when you're talking about communication, when you're trying to build that skill. This is a great game to play at the beginning and the end so you can see the difference in communication styles and where communication can go. So Adam is going to have one minute to give each of you directions on how to draw a picture that he has sitting in front of him. He can give you basic directions. You may not ask questions. You have to just listen to his train of thought and follow it as closely as you can. Adam, I'm starting my clock now. You have one minute. Good luck, my friend. Okay, if your paper was divided into three sections vertically, you're going to start working in the middle section of the paper. Um, in the middle of the middle section, draw a line about three inches vertically on the left side of that middle section down. When you get to the bottom of that line, you're going to draw another line horizontally about three inches to the right. Then at the end of that right line, you're going to draw vertically up to get on okay. plane with that first line you drew. Then you're going to connect the first to the first line, making a shape. <laughs> um, no, Don't show yet. Don't show yet. Then you're going to from your starting point of the entire drawing, you're going to make a vertical line up about two inches. At the top of that line, you're going to draw a vertical line. A All right, Adam, you've got 30 seconds. Vertical line down to the other top end of your shape. At the top point of your new shape, you're going to draw a horizontal line about three inches to the right. Then you will draw a vertical line right down about three inches. Then you will complete a horizontal line to the bottom point of the second shape you made. Excellent. Adam, time is up. So show of hands, uh, thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. Who thinks they got what Adam was drawing? 
There is a resounding no. I see two people with thumbs up. So here's what you didn't know. I actually told Adam I was going to give him a $100 gift card if anybody drew exactly what he was drawing. And here was the picture he was supposed to be drawing. Did anybody, did anybody get that drawn? Let's see what uh, you did get. So we got, we got close. We, we got the outline, the shape of some houses. So this is a fun activity that you play when you first start. <laughs> um, because it, it shows the kind of communication and, and the levels of communication and what you need to communicate. Had Adam said to you guys, hey, everybody, we're going to draw a house. Would any of you draw on this exact house? No, right? Because our interpretation of house is very different. So through directions, through an understanding of what we're supposed to be communicating, you can, you can draw those correlations. We would then do a session about communication, about uh, positives and negatives and easy ways to communicate through a virtual world. We would then select somebody else at random, give them a harder picture to draw and see how well the group has learned. Uh, that is a super quick uh, idea of the way you can do this, engage but incorporate content. Um, so thank you guys for, for playing along with us. Uh, Sharon, I'll turn it back over to you. I know we've got a few minutes for some Q&A. We do indeed. So let me just wrap really quickly with what we we're talking about. And, you know, and, and thank you, Josh. That was a great way to kind of in a, in a three minute exercise <laughs> convey a little bit of learning and, and what you can do if you have the right game in the right place to help tie into your content and what you're trying to teach. So, um, so we're going to end with that from our talking point. And then, Rich, let's jump into some questions. Yeah, we've just got time for one or, one or two questions. Um, so the first one we have is, what are the optimum times in an agenda to provide these breaks? Are there better times than others? Um, it really depends on what the break is. So if you're doing something that is designed to get people up and moving and blood flowing and you're just trying to get them energized, to me that's like mid-morning and mid-afternoon because that's when we start to sag from all the coffee we've drank and the coffee's wearing off, our lunch is starting to settle in, we're trying to digest, um, we need some additional physical energy. So, so that's always a good time to provide those. I think providing things that are learning oriented, games and activities and participatory things that involve learning, you do it in every single session. Then everybody doesn't, you know, you're not always just sitting listening to a webinar after webinar after webinar. Um, so I think it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what your purpose is, and then you can kind of figure out where it fits in the best. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and one, uh, time for one last question. Um, from the data that you have, what are the top games um, that you offer, um, with the escape room or the like, scavenger hunts? What, what tends to have the best feedback from the uh, attendees? <laughs> you know, it depends on why we're doing it. If we're doing something that's... Uh, uh, cocktail happy hour kind of a time then you know things that are just let's kick back have some fun get to know each other things like trivia contest and the scavenger hunt thing that we did with you anything with music is fun um, if we're trying to um, interject some real team things the chain reaction that I mentioned is a really really popular activity people love that one uh, we have an event called the ABCs of Teamwork, which is a game that you play that emphasizes how to come together as a team. Then on that higher plane, we have an event called the Infinite Loop, which is really all, it's a, you're basically playing in, in, a, in a virtual world and you're having to share information and solve problems. So, um, so it really depends what your purpose is, but there are a lot of events on that educational content scale. Our favorite thing to do, though, is custom design based on content. It is to have somebody call and say, here's what we're trying to teach. Help me figure out what to do that's fun. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, unfortunately, we're out of time um, for, for today. There were a couple of questions that we couldn't get to. So um, you can see the contact details there on the screen. Um, you can also contact uh, Sharon and Josh through the, the app. So if you, if you contact any of the uh, Play With The Purpose team, they'll be more than happy to help with, with any questions that you have. Um, and this session was recorded, so it will be online on Planet IMEX uh, very, very soon.